This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how you can create these watercolor logos using GIMP. And if you'd like to learn more about how GIMP works, be sure to check out the GIMP series, which is a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the major tools and features in GIMP and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out. So let's go ahead and get started here in GIMP. The first thing we're going to start out with is our example image. And this dog here is what I'm going to use to make uh, a logo out of. And if you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing, I will have a link to all of the, uh, the, the example images I'm using in, in this tutorial. Otherwise, you can use some images of your own. So the first thing I want to do here is just create a silhouette of this dog here. And to do that, I'm going to use the paths tool, which is over here. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for that is B, but I want to put this on its own layer. So I'm going to come down here to where it says create a new layer, and I'm going to click on that. And I'm just going to name this layer outline. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to zoom in on the dog's uh, feet over here by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And if I want to move the page around, I can just press down the mouse wheel and move around the mouse like that. And I'm just going to click to create a point there, and I'll click to create more points going around the outline of the dog here. And don't worry about the lines being precise, uh, going precisely around the uh, outline of your subject here because they don't have to be precise. Uh, in fact, it, it, this, this sort of logo works better when they're not precise because it's supposed to be uh, like a watercolor painting. So I'm just going to go ahead and create some points going around the edges here. I'll go ahead and speed this up so you don't have to sit here and watch me do all of this. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you're creating these points, if you accidentally put a point somewhere where it's not supposed to be, you can quickly undo it by hitting Control Z on the keyboard, and that'll undo the most recent point like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up this outline going around the edge here, and right back to the starting point. Right before I click on the starting point, I'm going to hold Control, and then I click on that starting point, and what that does is it'll close the path. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press Enter on the keyboard, and that's going to create a selection from that path there. And I'm going to go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And that's going to fill it with black, as you can see there. Now let me go to Select None. Let me take let me uh, grab a different tool just to get rid of the paths from the screen there, and then I'll go back to the paths tool. Uh, if you notice here, there's some negative space like in between like the tail right here that I need to uh, account for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, opacity of this layer, and I'm just going to bring this down a little bit so I can see what's underneath it. And you can see where we have the negative space that I need to punch out here. So I'm going to grab the paths tool. Uh, your subject may or may not have this depending on the image you're using, but I'm just going to do this quickly for mine because mine does. I'm going to use the Paths tool here to create another selection going in there. Again, hold Control, click on the original path to close it, press Enter. And now instead of filling that in, I'm just going to press Delete on the keyboard to delete that area in there. Go to Select, None. And if you're using a Mac, I've, I've heard that pressing Delete on the keyboard doesn't work. So if you're using a Mac, just go to Edit, Clear, and that should do the trick there. Uh, let me go back up here, finally, to where the tail is. Let me click off of that, click back on it. There we go. Delete. Select. None. Let me grab the Move tool, and I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. I'm going to bring the opacity of that layer all the way back up to 100%, and now I'm going to turn off the visibility of the layer beneath it, which is the, uh, the original uh, layer with the image on it. Uh, before you do that, you just want to right-click on this and where it says Add Alpha Channel, make sure you have that clicked. If it's grayed out like you see on my screen, that means it's, it's already set. You don't have to do it. But if you can click on that, go ahead and click on that so that when you turn off the visibility by clicking this eyeball right here, it becomes transparent behind it like that. And that right there is what we're looking for. So this is going to be the shape of our logo. Uh, what we're going to do now is create the watercolor portion of the design, which is over here in this image. Uh, what you want to do is grab yourself a nice colorful image like this. Uh, again, I'll have a link to this image in the description if you want to follow along with exactly what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply the Oilify effects to this. So I'm, going, I'm going to go to Filters, Artistic, and I'm going to click on Oilify and grab that menu. And I'm going to take the mask radius and I'm just going to bring that all the way up like that. Well, not all the way, but like maybe three quarters of the way. And you're going to notice the image changing on your screen as you do that. I'll bring the exponent up as well, see how that looks. 
you give it a second to render it is a little CPU intensive um, maybe a little more try that out maybe bring that up a little more you might you might want to play around with it a little bit just to see what looks best right there I think that's pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and click OK to finalize that and now I'm gonna go back to my subject image over here I'm gonna to go to edit copy um, no you know what? I want to go to copy visible edit copy visible and then I'll come over here back to our image over here and go to edit paste as new layer and now I want to bring down the opacity of that new layer just a little bit just so I can see what's underneath it because I'm gonna line this up with exactly where I want it to uh, be placed and I'm going to grab the unified transform tool which is um, over here or what I like to do is I like to just press shift T on the keyboard to grab it there we go and now I'm going to grab this node over here to the bottom right if you notice there's two little squares in here there's one bigger square and then there's one tinier diamond you want to make sure you're grabbing the bigger square and not the diamond in there I'm gonna click and drag on that and then hold control and shift to scale that down uh, proportionately from the center like that and then I'm gonna hold alt and click and drag it just to move it over like that and I'm gonna place this dog right about where I want the uh, the colors to show through I want these colors right here to show through so I'm gonna leave that right about there go ahead and press enter on the keyboard to finalize that and now we could bring the opacity of that layer all the way back up to hundred percent and what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm going to turn off the visibility of that layer and I'm going to create a new layer I'm gonna click on this button over here that says create a new layer and add it to the image and where it says fill with I want to fill this with white click OK and now we have this new white layer I want to take this and just click and drag this beneath uh, beneath everything else all the way to the bottom like that and now I want to click on our original layer where our, where our image is and I want to right click on that and go to add layer mask and once we get the layer mask menu we want to choose black full transparency go ahead and click add and what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of the visibility of that entire layer there and it's only going to show through in areas where we add the color white so I'm going to come up here uh, I just want to swap around my foreground and background colors so that white is the foreground and back is the black round you could do that by pressing that little arrow right there and up here where we have our silhouette layer this pasted layer right here it'll show you in the preview window window there I want to right click that and go to alpha to selection right there and it's going to create an outline going around your subject and now I want to click on the pasted layer right beneath it but when you click on it make sure you select this black box right here and not the actual image and you'll know you have it selected down here in the status bar where it says pasted layer or when you click that it says pasted layer mask you want to have pasted layer mask selected there like that and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to edit fill with foreground color and it's going to fill it in like that now I'm going to go to select none and what I'll do now is I'm going to grab um, the paintbrush which is right here and the brush I'm going to use is this brush over here it's splats 01 it'll show you the title up here in the status bar just go ahead and grab that brush I believe it is a default brush in GIMP so just go ahead and look for that and again you want to make sure you have your foreground set to white and then just go ahead and click to add like a little bit of uh, uh, like like brush dots on there I may bring down the size of that brush a little bit put that there like that and again if you don't like how it came out you could just undo it by hitting control Z and that right there looks pretty good I think I'll leave that as it is and once you're finished with that what you could do is you could turn off the visibility of the white outline layer beneath it and then you can right click on this layer that we have selected here the middle one and go to apply layer mask and that's going to finalize it and there you go you have created your little silhouette watercolor logo and if you want you could turn the visibility of the white outline back on so you can add some text here and you know use the text tool to add some text there do whatever you'd like or what you could do is if you if you want to export it just as it is and then import it into something like Inkscape or Illustrator so you can create a vector copy of it and add your text that way you could turn off the visibility of the outline layer and go to image crop to content and then it'll only make it as big as it has to be and then you can go to file export as and you can export it as a dot png image with a transparent background so you can work with it further on from there so that should do it for this tutorial that's how you can go about creating those uh, watercolor logos using GIMP if you have any questions let me know and as always thanks for watching